All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. We are capping what has been a great show so far with a turn to some finance conversation. Uh, joining me from Iowa is my colleague in the college finance office. We've got Michelle Richardson here today. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hi, Ian. I'm great. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You said we were going to talk a little bit about emergency funds. Now, I'm concerned that this is because you're worried about me losing my job and you want to make sure that I've got a little bit of income uh, stashed away so that when that happens, all is well. But can you just tell me that I'm not, I'm, I'm good, right? Yes, you're, <laughs> you're good. But I do think it's important for all of us to think about having an emergency fund, regardless okay. of age. Not me in particular, but forever. This is just general advice. So you're not trying to like. I'm not, there's no nuance here. Okay. I don't know anything. Perfect. Good. Okay. So let's talk emergency <laughs> funds. So uh, what is an emergency fund? Is that kind of like, I've got some cash and when I get hungry, I break into that and I take it to Taco Bell and I, I feast, or is it something a little bit more thoughtful and um, yeah, I don't know, intentionally set aside? Yeah, intentionally set aside money is a good uh, way to describe an emergency fund. Um, emergency funds can be cash. They could be, you know, a checking account or a savings account. You know, I would always encourage looking for a, a higher yield savings account. Yep. Um, and, and it really is a, a stash of money should life happen. Mm -hmm. emergencies happen. Um, I found it very interesting. There was an article recently that came out last month that 61% of people do not have an emergency fund. And that number to mm -hmm. me seemed very high. And this came from a recent survey from Bankrate. And so, um, and we have a lot of conversations about emergency funds when we are speaking with students about finance, speaking with families about, you know, paying for college and, and saving for college or repaying student loans. You know, you always want to make sure that there's access to funds somewhere in case something happens. Well, maybe for those 61% of people, they just don't plan to have an emergency. And so they don't need to have an emergency fund, right? That's probably bad thinking. Um, what might happen? Like, What could be an emergency that a student in particular might need to have some funding in order mm -hmm. to have access to? I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, for me as an adult, I've got two kids, I've got a mortgage. An emergency fund for me is really about if I lose my job, I've got to be able to kind of bridge the gap between finding my next job. But what about a college student who's living in a dorm? What mm -hmm. could be the role of an emergency fund for them? So an emergency fund for them is, is not a sale at, you know, their, their favorite store. An emergency fund is things that I experienced when I was on campus was their car broke down. Or I had a student once who had to fly across the country home, you know, quickly for a funeral. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I know more students today may have, you know, a credit card for emergencies yeah. and I'm not discounting that either as another option, but starting early and having an emergency fund as, as a student can be really helpful because if you don't have that extra funds in case of an emergency, um, you're either going to have to put it on a credit card or ask mom and dad for the money. Um, and so there's just a lot of statistics and discipline that comes around having an emergency fund and developing that habit early. Yeah. So you don't get caught off guard because what happens when we get caught off guard financially, we get stressed, we get anxious, you know, and one of the biggest downfalls for a student is they could drop out of college. Right. And so if they got dropped out of college. Yeah, you stop working towards that degree. You potentially have some loans that you need to pay. Um, and so the idea of just saving a little bit towards an emergency fund can prevent that from happening. Also, I'm glad you mentioned credit cards because it's sort of a lot of students might say, well, I can just put this on my credit card and then I'll pay it back later. But you're looking at really high interest rates. And wouldn't you rather just save that amount in advance 
then pay the interest on that cost later, right? Absolutely. It's right proactive, but you know, it's, it's for the best in that regard. Yeah, because in, and the challenge for some college students is they don't, they may not have a lot of credit history yet. Right. They may not have a credit card. So then is it going for a personal loan, which even if they got approved, that would, you know, definitely be a significantly higher um, interest rate. And then the emergency is actually going to cost more overall than just having a, a small fund set set aside. So setting aside a fund, I think it's it's like, oh, great. I would love to have an emergency fund. Give me one, right? But that, it doesn't work that way. So uh, what should people be thinking about as they're putting an emergency fund together? Maybe I'm, I'm just getting started, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's my, I'm a freshman. I still listen, listen to getting in a college coach conversation because I just can't quit the lovely hosts and guests that show up every week. So I want to start an emergency fund. What should I do? Sure. So first thing is, is you might want to think about setting up a specific separate bank account, you know, maybe looking at a money market account or an account where you can get a little more interest than just your traditional savings. I personally find it's better to have a separate account for emergencies than just my, you know, kind of traditional spending in, in saving account. Um, But that's me personally. So I think setting aside a separate account, I think looking at setting a small goal, half the battle is just starting. And and really, this is the same conversation we have a lot with parents when starting to save for college. You know, you need to start, you need to start small. And I'm not saying that you you know, a lot of times in the, in the financial world, or if you were to do a search on emergency funds, you're going to see advisors say, well, you should have three to six months of, of salary yeah. put away. Yeah. And that can be daunting for even working adults like us, yeah. uh, you know, so it's more of a matter of starting small, start with $25 a pay period, $50 a pay period or a month if you're a student and get up to $250. And then when you hit that goal, then work it up to maybe $500 and, you know, and up to, you know, a a thousand it's, um, and it's very psychologically rewarding when you hit those little, you know, wins and victories and and goals. Um, I kind of look at it. It's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So, you know, we have to, I have to be disciplined to go to the gym every day. And, you know, just like I have to be disciplined to have money in an emergency fund. And, and so it's just developing that good habit that will set you up financially, you know, to be financially successful down the road. Yeah. And there, there are little things that you can do for yourself. You can say, all right, I really want a coffee, but maybe I'll take this time. Just take that $5 and throw it over into my savings account and skip the coffee this time or something along those lines where it just feels like a really small, even a choice to say, Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to put that exact amount of money over my emergency fund. You can see that start to add up and you're right. It is really rewarding to see those things start to stack up, but I'm I'm reminded of this great quote around um, trees, right? So they always say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today is because it takes so long for a tree to grow. Yeah. You want a 20 year old tree, of course, but Mm -hmm. if you can't do that, because you can't go back in time, then get started, plant a, plant a tree now, because in 20 years from now, then you've got it. And the same thing I think is true for these funds is just, of course, it would be better to have started years ago, but if you start now, you'll be happy years from now that you, that you got started on that. Right. Right. Is there anything to be, um, cautious of, and it looks like you may have froze up oh, your back. Okay. It was just a quick freeze that time. Is there anything for students to be cautious of when they're looking for a place to put that emergency fund? Um, you know, maybe an investment that, uh, they can't touch the funds for a while, right? Because presumably for an emergency fund, you want to have access to that resource right. in case you need it. Right. So you really, you know, we call that kind of having liquidity so you can Mm -hmm. have easy access to it. 
Um, one nice thing about like looking at a money market account or a high higher yield account is you can get the higher interest than maybe a traditional savings. Um, but there's a limited number of withdrawals you can typically have in those accounts every month. And, you know, an emergency fund account is not a fund that you want to tap into 10 times a month. No, it's, it's <laughs> missing the know, point there. Yeah. I, you know, you, you want it to sit there, um, continue to grow, hopefully earn a little interest. So your money is working for you and you're not having to pay interest if you were having to put that on a on a credit card or get a, a, a loan to cover the emergency um but i would say looking for those types of accounts and and you know understanding that if maybe you you want an investment account um because you're a more active maybe investor and and you're more of a risk taker than maybe i am um, you know, you have to be under, you have to know and understand that the money that you have in that account could easily go away should the market right. change. So not a good spot for your emergency fund. No, no, no definitely, definitely not. When, you know, you mentioned, uh, we're talking a little bit about students here and students might have different reasons for an emergency fund, but if I'm a parent and I'm, I'm starting to think about sending my kid to college, maybe I'm a parent of a high school freshman, I'm saving some for college, right? Do I also think about the emergency fund as a separate resource? Should I be putting into both buckets? Should I be putting into one bucket or another? How do I think about the emergency fund alongside all these other things that I want to do? Saving up for a car, saving for college tuition, et cetera. Do you have any quick advice to give to families about thinking about that split? Yes, sure. You know, we bring up an emergency fund and kind of try to look at the whole financial picture when we're talking to a family about saving for college. Um, you know, you want to make sure they're putting and saving for their retirement because you can borrow for college, but you can't really borrow for retirement. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I do feel like an emergency fund, especially if you own a home or have kids, um, we all know, I can tell you as a mom and a homeowner, there's always something, an appliance goes out or I have to take the kid to the dentist and, you know, we have to do an emergency procedure or my son broke his leg once in high school and, you know, then there were added medical expenses. So, you know, it, those are the things in life that we, you know, have to be prepared for uh, financially. Right. And for your kid, it might not be a broken leg or a trip to the dentist, but it might be a new roof or it might be got to change a tire all of a sudden. And they, these things do come up. So it's great counsel. I think it's really wise to, to think about. Um, and there are implications both for college students and for the families that are supporting them as they start college. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the insight, Michelle. Appreciate it. Yes, you're very welcome. Thanks, All right, Ian. folks, when we come back next week, we will have Beth Heaton hosting once again. We will, as I mentioned, be on the other side of November 1st, and so therefore a little bit more sane on the admission side of things. Uh, we will be talking interview strategies because interviews are top of mind for seniors. And we'll also address what to do if you've got a senior who is just starting this process. Uh, let's make sure that we enjoy Thanksgiving so maybe we can fire up some quick tips uh, just before the holidays. Uh, finally, we'll talk about the return on investment of higher education and how that might be different for everyone. So a great topic in there with finance. As always, we're happy to bring our expertise to you. We hope that you're having a lovely start to your fall. Thanks again, Michelle. Uh, and we'll see you all here next week. Mm -hmm.